Welcome back to Cursed Mining and today it's building day again. If you already know the channel, you know that this has been coming for some time because it's actually a rebuild. The rig was running with four cards and two others have been waiting. Still, while rebuilding, I want to go over the basic parts of an open air GPU mining rig to give you some impressions or inspiration in case you want to go in building mode too. If you're interested in riserless GPU miners in closed case solutions or in video rig for that matter, I have a lot of videos on my Octominer build on the channel. Let's go over the parts and start with the GPUs. If you know my rigs, you know that I have a wild mix of various brands and cards, so it's no different with the AMD rig. You see 5 RX cards as well as an older R9. So for the RX cards it's an Asus Strix 460, two 470s, Strix and XFX, and two 580s, Gigabyte and Biostar. Lastly, there's the Monster R9 280X with its custom cooler which got its own video. It's also a rig exhaust. So first of all, I'm taking everything apart again. It's good to start fresh with these kind of things. We already did basic cleaning in my spring cleaning video, so we can directly start with reorganizing and remanaging cables. Let's talk about motherboards for a second. This is the Gigabyte H110D3A and this was a say older generation of mining boards, but it was still already advertised as such back then. It can hold 6 GPUs, but what I like about it that you could theoretically build it out even further because of the M.2 slot. So let's see in the future. Nowadays of course we have even crazier mining boards. For example the Gigabyte B250 Fintech for 12 GPUs or even the Asus B250 Mining Expert with 19 slots. So here it fully depends on what you want to be building. One big rig or more than one smaller one. I'm very happy with the older Gigabyte motherboard and it's still a budget solution today. CPU wise you don't have to worry much except you want to mine with the CPU too. So the Pentium G4400 is a weak, cheap but sufficient CPU for an ordinary mining rig. Also if not using Vega cards, 4GB of RAM is usually more than enough. In the meantime I'm already installing cards and laying everything out. With open air rigs you need risers and I'm installing those together with the cards. There are different brands and models but I'd recommend to go for the newer ones like version 8 or version 9. Also I just want to say how important it is not to use SATA adapters for your risers or GPU. I won't lose too much time on this topic since this was actually the very first video of the channel. And I got some hate for it because of course you can be safe with SATA when you do calculate everything exactly. But power spikes are hard to calculate and I just generally want to keep all the danger down. So you can use 6 pin splitters or molex for your risers. But also mind not to power more than 2 risers per lane. I also got some critique because I advocate against fire hazard and then use a piece of wood under the risers. But this piece of wood is coated in fire resistant clear paint. Otherwise it would not get into the rig. Still not perfect of course, but it works. The last thing about risers is that it's always good to have one more than you actually need. You never want to lose any mining time just because of a faulty cable or riser. And this is also why the trend of riserless motherboards emerged. Beside cards, motherboard and risers, we of course need a way to power our rig. There are generally two different ways to go. The ordinary ATX power supply you'd have in your PC or the service style way. I generally try to go for platinum power efficiency ratings either way because we are in it for the long term and it's just worth it in my opinion. Generally I like both ways of doing it but for GPU rigs I prefer the server way. So we are upgrading the 750W PSU to the 1200W version just to have more headroom. With these kinds of PSUs you need a breakout board in order to plug 6 pin cables in. If you want to power the 24 pin of a motherboard you'll need an additional little gadget which is called Pico power supply. So that is a little power supply in itself powering your CPU and motherboard and normally has a 6 pin to DC cable included. It also offers additional SATA for hard drives or Molex. I'll use the Molex for another riser. And just another piece of advice if you are using ATX power supplies, don't use other cables for your PSU than the original ones. 
If you don't have enough 6 pin connectors for example, it would be best to order more directly from the manufacturer for the exact kind of power supply you have, because each and every brand has different specifications and often even among their own different models. So that's another reason why I'm a breakout board fan. Also, depending on your operating system, you'll either need a hard drive or an USB stick. For the AMD rig I use Windows 10, so it has its own little SSD. The cheaper solutions are Linux based systems like SimpleOS or HiveOS. For these you just need an 8GB USB stick. I like to have Windows on this machine because with this I can have an older build of Windows which still supports BIOS modding on the AMD cards. My Octaminer is on HiveOS by now. So back to building. The slight OCD in me would like to arrange the cards by size or model, but there's actually a reason behind it. The monster card I mentioned before works as the perfect exhaust, but only when the small RX460 is in front of it rather than a larger card, but we'll talk more about airflow later. One thing we didn't talk about is frames, and here too the possibilities are endless. So when you google custom self-made frames you will find wonderful inspiration of very creative people, but to be honest if it's not tech or <laughs> music I have two left hands, so this frame is actually a cheap one from eBay. It's not perfect, but it does its job. There are many different, cheaper and more expensive versions out there and it fully depends on your needs and your mining space. Your choice of frame will also influence airflow, at least directly on the rig. Mine for example only offers one row, or at least I'd have to do some customization if I wanted to have fans in front of the cards too. So keep that in mind when you are thinking about your frame. You see my frame also does not offer much space for cable management on this side, but it will be to the wall anyway if you know my room so it's not so bad. But it's still more beautiful than it was before. Also I'd recommend to do some testing before tidying everything up, but let's go the hard way. Mistakes and bugs are something you can always learn from. So now we are powering up the rig and before we talk about the software side of things I want to show you the airflow and the crazy exhaust of the Delta fans. For testing airflow I also use the vape nation method because it just works well but be careful not to choke okay. You see even if I blow over the far left card the delta is still sucking everything in so perfect. So let's take a look inside. Guess what? <laughs> not all cards recognized but I expected this. The cards which have already been in the rig have been BIOS modded. The new cards not yet because I actually will change what the rig is mining. It was on Dagger Hashimoto, which means the Ethereum algorithm, not necessarily ETH itself, and was also BIOS modded for it. Now I'm thinking of leaving the cards on Monero for the summer because it's generally cooler and there you would use different BIOS mods. So we have three BIOS modded cards, two unmodded ones and the R9. And of course AMD drivers don't like that at all. Now you can see me doing some fiddling around. For example, I'm saving the original BIOS. That's generally the first thing I do just to be safe. Also keep the original BIOSes somewhere else. And also that's what I meant with tidying down. If you have problems, for example, sometimes it's a good thing to plug a card in. So I build a little hinge for the fans that I don't have to take everything apart again just to reach a card. That's already it from the hardware side, but you see that the software is a whole other thing in mining too. I got the drivers to recognize the cards again, but still we only got up to 5 of 6, which showed me a new problem with AMD I did not know before. Of course this means you will get a separate video about this and how to fix it, but this video today was about hardware and building only, and I don't want it to get on for too long. So what's left to do is just a little benchmark. Please mind that this is far from optimized, because I already told you that three cards are still BIOS modded for Dagger Hashimoto, two others not at all. But for me it was important to get the rig together how it will be for the summer, because software changes can be done later in peace. Also this gives me the chance to do videos for you when I don't do everything at once. So we are at about 3 kilohash for Monero, which is not perfect but okay. But what's good about it is that the cards are below 60 degrees and this is the most important thing for me this summer. So my friends, this is already it for this week. We took the AMD rig apart, rebuilt it and talked about the hardware side of things. Now you already know that some videos about software will be coming up soon too, as well as some more card maintenance which I did not show in this video. I hope you liked this rebuild. Maybe you could learn something new or get inspiration for your own rig. If I left something out or you want to see something in particular, please tell me in the comments. Have a nice week and happy mining. Bye.